Alright, howdy boyos, and welcome back to Arma 3 with today a mod review of Project Uncut. I have tried to take a more RHS video approach this particular mod review, so do let me know in the comment section if you prefer this sort of overview in the editor with stuff already pre-plays down, not pre-prays down, and, or if you prefer to me to go over to the arsenal and show you the kits, um, you know, on my own character, which obviously I guess goes a little bit more into detail, but it also takes a bit longer. So, the Project Uncut, um, there's already some, this is already worked on a while back, and it's already in our packs for a while, but they recently sort of re-uploaded it to Workshop with a lot of new content, so I figured it was definitely time for a mod review video. Now, as always, if you want me to review a specific mod or map or whatever, let me know in the comment section. Don't link the link because that will actually probably block it on YouTube. But just link me uh, the name or mention a name or uh, the map of the name of the mod. Because uh, I'm always interested to see what you guys want me to review. And uh, it wouldn't be the first time I actually pick one of your guys' um, like sort of requests, I suppose. Anyway, on to Project Uncut. I will link it in the description. There's actually two versions. There is the full version or the sort of basic version, which is this, which has the vehicles and two camouflage patterns. And then there's another sort of 50 to 60 megabyte additional one, which also includes tropical and winter camouflage for their special forces. So if you want to, um, you know, play as uh, Australian SAS in the Arctic, then you will might have to download the additional uh, mod for that. I will link both those in the description. With that being said, we're going to get going. This is one of the two vehicles they have in the mod. They have uh, a set of Blackhawks, and my character does not want to run. We have a set of Blackhawks. We have one armed with two mag machine guns. As far as I know, this is a sort of predecessor to the M240. Uh, the British still use this as the L7A2, their general purpose machine gun. As you can see, there is a missing texture. They are aware of it, and they said they are going to be fixing that in a release soon. Now, this is a transport version with the two machine guns. They have another transport version with no machine guns, which is this one right here. Uh, same seating arrangement. However, like I said, there's no machine guns, but there is still seats, I believe, yet for these people to be sitting in if you do want to sit there. And last but not least, a long-range version with two additional pylons, which look like fuel tanks, also with no machine guns. Um, but, you know, if you need to fly a little bit further, then here is your version. Moving on to the other vehicle it currently in the mod is the Aslav, an Australian version of the American LAV-25, which in their turn is based on a Canadian Piranha fighting vehicle. It comes in a single camouflage, which has this amazing little kangaroo on the side with the tech send me to Takistan. Obviously it's armed with the mag, and I think it is a 25 millimeter gun it also has the ability to mount both armored slats around the main hull area and around the turret as well. Personally, I would really like to see some different camouflage patterns. Um, it seems kind of illogical to have uh, this camouflage pattern if you were to fight in the Arctic. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a very nice looking vehicle. And uh, at the end of this video, we're going to shoot... A little bit from this one because I'm actually pretty excited to go be checking this one out. I put some crew in front of it. Um, I will be looking into detail on their uniforms and their weapons a little bit more, uh, but you get kind of an idea. I believe there is room for six, including the crew, so it's not a very big vehicle, um, but you know, it can definitely transport a fire team and have you know a gunner and a driver. Moving on to the infantry, we have a standard Australian army squad. We're going to start off by looking at their DMR, which is the AK-416. And the cool thing about the Project Uncut mod, or the Australian mod, or whatever you want to call it, is that their um, modability, or their amount of vests, is really insanely high. So what really triggers me is if I see a guy carrying a 249 or an M240 or any sort of, let's say, uh, belt-fed machine gun, but he has to wear a vest 
that has like Stenag mags on it or or 30 round AK magazines when using a PKM and something like that just triggers me to no end. The Australian mod has however a an absolute abundance of different vests for different roles so you're never going to have to you know wear a Stenag mag vest when using an M240. The HK416 I believe uh, here is uh, slightly different from the Arma Vanilla one. The scope is definitely definitely different. Reminds me a lot of the British DMR set you see in the L129 DMR. Now they have a different amount of helmets as well. This squad all comes with the same helmet, but they have different helmets. They have airframes, they have uh, fast helmets. This looks like an ACH. We have a Grenadier, and like I said, the vest here has actually grenade launcher pouches on it. He's using an F88 in a different camouflage pattern. There's actually quite a few guns. We'll go over those uh, in the arsenal at the end of this video kind of quickly and shoot some of them. We have a guy with the M72 Law Light AT. We have, I believe, a team leader. We have a, another team leader, obviously a fire team or a squad having two fire team leaders. We have a mini me, uh, which is basically, for all intents and purposes, a 249 with the C79 scope on it. This guy could be a squat leader. And a another mini me. So the Australian squad here, this is the AMC or Australian multicam or AMP, sorry, Australian multicam pattern camouflage. There's also another camouflage. Uh, besides the mod that I told you about that adds the tropical and winter camouflages that I'll show you right now. So moving on to the other camouflage is the AMC, the Australian Multi-Cam Camouflage. It's a little bit green, uh, or more green, almost slightly orange uh, aspects in there. Um, and this is what the Australian Army is going to be switching into uh, according to Camopedia. Now, most of these guys are armed with uh, just a little bit different variation of guns. We have the EF-88s, which is the uh, which stands for Enhanced F-88, with the F-88 being the Australian service rifle and the uh, EF-88 being a sort of uh, upgraded version. There's a whole list of uh, slight upgrades to it that I'm not going to go over. Uh, it's literally like, we shortened the bolt by 15 millimeters. It's like, well, you know, it's fucking armor, all right? Calm down. Um, and also, right here, I just walked by him. Let's go uh, here. I am unsure. This looks to be like a mini me para. Uh, like I said, the in RHS, there is actually an M249 para. I'm 100% sure this is the exact same thing, but uh, they call it a mini me. I do believe there is not a large difference between a mini me and a 249. However, do feel free to let me know in the comment section if I'm just totally lying to you right now. Uh, I've always been told the mini me and a 249 and a maxi me and a 240 are basically all. The maxi me and a 240, actually, that's not true. But the mini me and a 249 should be the same thing to, the, to a very large degree. Um, the only difference being, I believe, that the mini me uh, is still obviously being built by FN in Belgium and the 249 is being built under license in America. Moving on, we have uh, some special forces guys to look at who are obviously armed with some different weaponry. I actually lied to you, these are not special forces. This is a support squad from the Australian mod uh, in the 2014 or later variant. You can see that by the AMP camo. They have uh, multiple grenadiers and just infantry with uh, probably ammo carrying capa ca capacities because this squad has two mag machine guns and has a single Carl Gustav. Like I said, the mag machine gun is uh, basically the predecessor of the 240 uh, before they modernized it and uh, basically made the 240 out of it. Um, and I think, like I said, the L7A2 is still very much based on this very particular machine gun and still in use with the British Army. And over here we have the Carl Gustav, uh, which also is in the mod. And I'm going to fire all of these weapons at the end of this video. I just wanted to uh, make this a little bit quicker because I feel like I can go through all the uniforms specifically or just show you them on the uh, on the, the, the units. And it actually looks uh, very good. You can actually them there in different fast helmets. They have them with um, ESS. They have them with uh, ear muffs. Uh, they have very large amount of uh, different camo styles and variations. Now we're at the Special Forces. The Australian SAS, which I believe is called the SASR. These are obviously uh, the elite that Australia has to offer. And most of these are armed with the M4A5, which is nothing but an American M4 in just a different designation. I'm not really sure why countries decide to do that, but 
you know, I'm not Australian. I don't work for the uh, government, so don't ask me. And uh, they're mostly armed with M4A5s. There was a guy with an HK-417 uh, back there. And they have two guys which look to be armed with Maximes, which, uh, or Max, yeah, Maximes, which are um, very close to the Mark 48. It's basically a saw, but instead of firing 5.56, five, it fires 7.62. So a very large caliber uh, uh, bullet in a very small, relatively speaking, package with lots of firepower, but I'm assuming accuracy-wise it really has to suffer. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to go into the arsenal, fire some of these guns, and obviously take a look at the LAVs, and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this mod review so far. Just to give you a very quick look, uh, like I said, I did, wasn't lying when I said I had a very large amount of different camouflage and different roll vests. So it means like you'll never ever have to worry like am I going to find a vest that fix, fits my camo and my roll, which I really really appreciate, like I said. Anyway, we're gonna move on to some gun. I fought the law and the law won. The M72 law, uh, still in use in quite a few countries in the world. Um, some countries have obviously switched uh, to the uh, M136 or the AT4. Um, but lots of countries still, I'm assuming, have just an abundance of these launchers available to them. The only downside is that if you want to make this the way that it realistically is, which is a one-time shot disposable, like you fire your rocket and drop it on the ground after that, you'll have to use Ace, uh, because Vanilla Arma isn't really a big fan of one-shot disposable launchers, so you can actually reload it indefinitely. So if you want it to work 100% fine, you need to use Ace, then again, uh, the people that are going to be interested in using this in their units, etc., are don't te definitely going to be using Ace or some version of it anyway. Now, the Project Uncut Carl Gustav is something different. It obviously comes with a sight that you can take on and off, which is really cool. Let's take it off and just take a look at the iron sights real quick. Uh, they're probably... Oh, I can't seem to be... Okay, so you actually cannot use it with iron sights unless I'm stupid. I'm trying. So we're going to put the we're going to put the side back on. So this Carl Gustav is really something different. Now, the cool thing about this Carl Gustav is that it has five different variations of ammunition. It's got HE, HEDP, heat smoke, and heat trap. Now, I have no clue what heat trap may mean. I have a good idea. I'm assuming it means just a better heat round. But I have never heard of it before. We're going to fire it at these vehicles. It seems to be very effective. Kind of expected that against a light APC. Let's load the HE rocket and uh, try and hit that guy back there. What is he? Like, probably 600 away. Let's try this. Oh, there's actually two different... Oh, I just realized. Well... We got close. I don't think we killed him, but... Uh, there's so I'm not really too sure how the range finder net or the ranging on that thing works. There's two different am ammunition sort of uh, rangings: STD. I hope I don't have one. And RAP. I don't know if there's anything or sort of rap going on in the Australian Army, but uh, we're gonna obviously now have to fire the other. One. That's going straight through his uh, him, I guess. And it will still have HEDP and smoke. I'm really excited to see what smoke does. Let's fire HEDP at the tank. Actually, blew its tracks right off. If that was a real tank. And then we have smoke, which I'm really excited about to see what it does. Okay, it just literally shoots a smoke. It literally shoots a smoke grenade in the ground. So the Carl Gustav in the Project Uncut mod, wrong button. Project Uncut mod is a very versatile piece of equipment. Whether you need to deal with uh, laying down smoke for your team or blowing a hole in any sort of object from buildings to tanks to light vehicles, the only thing I would like to see here is an illumination round. You can shoot it in the sky. And just um, basically create a second sun. Something that uh, I believe exists with the TF-47 launchers. And goddamn, if that thing launches at night, you are blind if you have nods on. Moving on. Like I said, there is quite a few versions of the Steyr AUG in this mod. From the very basic F-88 to the enhanced versions, to versions with grenade launchers, versions with camouflage. We're gonna just shoot two of these, because they're all probably gonna sound the same. We're gonna just shoot the basic EF-88 and shoot one of the camouflaged ones. 
However, there is also a couple of sites that you can use. Like I said, this is the C79. We have different Alcan Spectres, an EOTech with magnifier that actually works, which is really cool. The Swarovski CQB Optic, which reminds me of the uh, the jewelry brand, and the uh, six times ACOG with RMR up top, and I believe just a four times ACOG with RMR up top. But it's definitely some nice uh, options for sites. Let's just uh, fire a couple of rounds from the EF88. Kind of uncontrollable, even with the foregrip. This looks to be like one of those foregrips that you can actually put down on the ground. Look at that, yeah, it actually deploys a bipod. Really cool, probably something that you don't have on the regular F88, but since this is the enhanced version, it does come with that. Now we're gonna grab just one of the F88s with a 203. Uh, sure, we'll grab the camo version. Just gonna have to grab some ammo for that real quick. There, grenade launcher, there we go. of recoil i guess i am laying down to be fair uh let's reload an he round oh i like this little red dot thing kobe no that was way too far away let's try that again 50 meters does this thing oh it does move okay i guess i guess my my angle on it moves a little bit let's try this one then 50 meters Wow, that was directly at his feet. So uh, that works at least. Uh, it's a really nice gun. I do like the augs. Wait, did that not reload? Oh no, it did. Okay, I thought that it didn't reload the magazine. I do really like the augs. There's something about augs that I uh, learned about them when I started playing Battlefield Back Company 1 as a kid. And ever since then, I actually really had a sort of hidden love for the aug. I wouldn't call it my favorite weapon, but it does look pretty cool. Moving on, we have the Maxi Me. We're gonna just fire this one and a Mini Me and the Mag and sort of get a feeling for them. Ooh, I like the sound of that. It's very heavy recoil. It does have a, uh, does not have a built-in tripod. It actually has, just has a foregrip. So this is really a sort of close support weapon or squad automatic weapon. You're not gonna be able to lay down a lot of uh, accurate suppressive fire. Well, I guess accurate suppressive fire is kind of a stupid thing to say because suppressive fire isn't really meant to be accurate to begin with. I guess that's, that was my thing. Oh, I guess you can actually attach a bipod to it. Let's just work, let's see. Oh, well, there you go. There you have it, folks. And the accuracy just improved so much. Nice. All right, now the mini me. Well, so let's grab the para version. Can we attach, okay, we cannot attach a bipod on that. Does it come with a, Oh, nice. I, I love I love the future. It just has the four grips that have bipods in them. Whoever made that idea, I hope that he's really rich because that's very smart. I actually really like the sound of this one. So this was the Mini Me Para, uh, which I believe is just a 249, but it's is looks a bit different but then again don't quote me on that no one's ever told me that that's not true but if it's not true please tell me so i can stop telling lies to people on the internet then we have the 417 and i started to try out the swarovski site and it looks very stupid on this particular gun oh i like that though that's a good site what is this like this is pretty good probably a pretty old site though it looks really old Hmm, actually uh, a pretty nice looking gun. I like the sound of it. That sight is uh, interesting. Really reminds me of like uh, the ZF-41 scope on like an STG-44 uh, from World War II. But uh, yeah, no, a very, very nice looking gun indeed. Moving on to the M4A5, and there's also one with a grenade launcher version. We'll actually just take a different uh, sight again. So this is basically just an M4. Um, A1, but it has the designation of an M4A5 because it's not an Australian service. The fire rate on this seems a little slow. Maybe that's me. I feel like the fire rate could be a, should be a little bit higher, but then again, don't quote me on that. It just feels like a little bit low compared to uh, other M4s I fired in Arma. Um, moving on to obviously the last gun is the Mag 58. 
Uh, let's just take the Alcan, which I think this belongs on there, if anything. Is there any, or there's actually a bipod we can take on that. Although it doesn't seem to, I guess the bipod's built in there. So uh, let's lay down and listen to this beauty. God, dude, holy hell. I, is there different ammo for this? There's, okay, there's only a tracer. Let's reload a tracer and look at the real animation, obviously. That's actually, no, that's pretty good. But let's fire this. That, this, this gun is very, very fast firing. I thought it was going to be a lot less fast. A really honestly nice looking gun, a pretty damn good texture job. Um, maybe the front looks a little bit too clean for a gun that is, you know, 50 or 40 or 50 years old, I believe, but a very nice looking gun. I like the wood finish here and it just sounds pretty heavy and it's got that nice, like super high fire rate. What we're gonna do is we're gonna check out the gun on the LAV and then uh, we're gonna call this the end of the video. I actually lied to you in the video. It has a crew of seven, a driver, a gunner, a commander, and a room for four passengers. Like I said, you have the ability to mount and dismount the slat armor or spaced armor. Uh, we're gonna take over the gunner seat and just take a quick look and see uh, what this thing has to offer. There's a 200 round mag actual position which has both a single and a full auto fire mode. And we have the Bushmaster, which has AP, FS, DST, and HEIT. I'm assuming that's armor piercing, fin stabilized, discarding, sabo, tracer ammo. Then again, don't quote me on that. Uh, we have three fire modes on the Bushmaster. We have a uh, single fire, which is going to be that a burst or maybe sort of slower single fire or sort of continued let's see what this does actually so I'm just holding the mouse button down so it is definitely a sort of slow firing but you know automatic you don't have to keep the trigger down to fire and I'm assuming we're gonna have a sort of a, a more full auto version to deal with uh, let's say there's a helicopter flying over and you really want to hit it let's, let's see there's, there's night vision and there is thermal, both white hot and black hot. And there's obviously a regular view. Let's uh, let's try and obliterate this fella. Oh my god. Okay, let's load the APFSDS. Quick reload. Very quick reload. As is to be expected, uh, nothing really well against armor. And I guess that's as far as I know, you're shooting a giant 30 millimeter round into them, which obviously isn't going to really feel good for them. So they're probably not going to survive. With that being said, though, I have to say the Project Uncut really came back having uh, not really updated in a while. They came back, oops, came back with the, a large update with especially the as God damn it, the Aslav and a Blackhawk in there. I am honestly really excited to be checking this mod out in an operation in the near future. And I hope you guys are uh, very interested yourself in checking. Like I said, if you want to see me review a specific mod, let me know in the comment section. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Arma 3 mod review. Cheers.